overview of how to trade the T2 slingshot strategy now I'll also touch on trading the T25 the 34B and even mention the 2B as you'll see these other trade setups set up all the time around or at the same time as the T2 and you'll also have multiple setups that is you'll have a T25 34B and the slingshot at the same time so I'll point those out as we go along so as we get underway I do need to pull up the uh, risk disclaimer there is a trading there sorry there is a trading of course is trading <laughs> there is a risk in trading as you're watching the video please feel free to pause the recording to read the disclaimer now the handouts that I refer to in this session you'll find them in the general members uh, area under the t2 slingshot strategy folder it's a new folder I've opened up so it'll make it easy for you to locate this PowerPoint and a couple of other uh, cheat sheets that I refer to in this session so you'll find the original t2 slingshot PowerPoint that I recorded gee whiz it's probably seven or eight years ago now or I prepared seven or eight years ago as well as this one also I just a, uh, a short cheat sheet on trading the t25 and the 34b and also the t2 ah that's right I've also uploaded into this folder the t10 cheat sheet as well because we'll identify those as we run through this session as well I'll try to keep it to around 30 minutes we'll just see how we go so in the PowerPoints it really gives you uh, particularly the one over here on the right and the cheat sheet right here on the left here it gives you a really good rundown of the indicators we're using etc so I'll skip through those uh, I'll let you review the PowerPoints and the cheat sheet for that but we'll get to some of the key uh, what, what what I call them the key points on trading uh, the slingshot now first of all do I have a good trending 13 EMA 21 EMA 34 and 89 now here I've got down do we have a good trending 13 B so are we bouncing off for 13 are we bouncing off for 21 the 34 the 89 now in between of course if you wish you can overlay on your chart a 55 EMA you may find that you're having a slingshot or a bounce at that point as well I usually don't have the 55 on the chart otherwise it's just really getting so many lines all over the place um, but bottom line is we really want to see these trending and the core indicator or the core EMA is the 34 now with a trending 34 EMA I want to see what I call the fanning of the EMAs we want to see them all basically trending together now when you have a deeper pullback to say the 89 EMA quite often you're not going to have a slingshot trade a t2 why because as we pull back towards the 89 sometimes it can be a very deep pullback and the long-term stochastic will be against the trade I'll point that out when we get to the charts shortly so the next point point three is the long-term stochastic fully overbought oversold or close to being overbought or oversold confirming the trend and trade direction so if I find that uh, I'm just outside say the 80 20 zone uh, I've just pulled back perhaps a little bit because say if I get a pull back to even a 34 EMA at times sometimes the long-term stochastic that may have been say overbought will pull back slightly that's okay the the key factor is though do I have a trending 34 EMA do I have a short-term stochastic hook now you'll see on the charts that I've got a, a drop in and if I haven't I'll drop it in on this chart I don't remember right now but I always drop in with the chart I'm trading a horizontal line at the 50% level and so if I'm going to go long I want to see if a short-term stochastic hook below the 50 level if I'm going short I want to see uh, the short-term stochastic come up and hook above and hook back down the 50% level you'll see that uh, very soon uh, 
now instead of a short-term stochastic you can also use a two-period RSI Larry Connor said that if there was only one indicator that he could have out of all the indicators available it would be a two-period RSI now coincidentally what I've discovered is the two-period RSI matches exactly the top five period short-term stochastic so when we're overbought and let me actually I should just clarify that whenever we're overbought or oversold in the 80 20 zone okay so when we're overbought and we hook on the short term the two period so what is the difference well when you're in between the 80 20 area you'll find you get sort of these sort of uh, how can I put it waves with a short-term stochastic where with a, a, a two period RSI you get sort of straight lines so when you're in I call it no man's land the 80 20 zone uh, you'll tend to find that uh, the two period will give you straight lines where you'll get waves and you'll see that uh, in a moment now another very important consideration and that is we really want to be trading in the direction of a higher time frame so using our formula on picking the anchor charts uh, is the trade in the direction of the anchor chart trend and or cloud so if you've got the ability to put the cloud on your chart fantastic or so what we're really looking for here is with the cloud and the trend am I trading in the direction of the anchor chart 1 21 EMA and ideally for long-term stochastic okay so that's really a key point it'll increase your trade probabilities now just when it comes to the t25 and the 34b you may remember that the t25 is the old floor trader strategy okay it's where you get a, a two to five candle pullback in the direction of the trend and for those that really know their chart patterns what that ends up setting up is a flag pattern in the direction of a trend now it doesn't matter if it's if in a really strong trend if you have a one candle pullback or a seven candle pullback all right all very closely related to a t25 then we've got our 34b okay one of our a very robust high probability trading strategy okay now uh, you'll see that quite often I'll have a 5 EMA on my chart because it just turns slightly quicker than the 8 but marginally it's one candle usually okay so uh, I look at the 5 and the 8 EMAs as being what I call the momentum EMA so we want momentum we want to see they are definitely hooked and trending in the direction of the 34 EMA so we want to see the 5 and the 8 EMA above the 34 above the trending 34 for a long and the opposite is true for a short we want to see the 5 and 8 below the down trending 34 for a short now if you're trading uh, using say tick charts or a time based chart or even volume based charts uh, what you want to see is actually the candle close in the top one third okay so we want to see the candles closing in the top one third of that candle so using a, a, a tick chart countdown timer that'll give you a really good idea when the candles about to close so you can sort of get right in on the candle close provided uh, you're in the top one third or if you're going short in the lower one third remember never trade against the five of the eight very important uh, or for long-term stochastic okay you remember with with the slingshot particularly for long-term stochastic and the 34 EMAs a core to the strategy now likewise don't trade against the 89 so the 89 is also a great indicator on your entry chart of the shorter term higher time frame momentum if you like the other thing you want to be cautious of is when you're getting a lot of again a lot of angulation or divergence setting up you're much more likely to have a slingshot fail t25 34 RB so just be cautious when you see that uh, price action is moving well out of the EMAs that is then becoming what we call a reversion to the mean trade 
the best t25s 34 B's or even slint shots um, will generally be after you have a t20 or a t20-1 that is early in a trend so by identifying a trend early that's what you're generally going to pick up some of the best trades and trades that will give you the runners if that's what you're looking for as always we've got to be very careful when we're buying or selling into the floor pivots so you've got the floor pivots the prior days open high low close levels and the 89 and 200 EMAs as they may act as support or resistance what you'll find is in a very strong trending day whether it be up or down to the long side of a short side we'll go through the pivots we'll easily punch through these levels but if you're sort of ranging between say the floor pivot and the R2 down to maybe the S1 S2 you'll find then that um, you'll bounce off these levels uh, regularly so very very important you understand how to trade the floor pivots now a really simple rule if the stochastic that is if the long-term stochastic is above the 80 you've got a valid long trade if the long-term stochastic is below the 20 you've got a valid short trade if the stochastic is between the 80 and 20 range what you really want to see is the long the is really the long-term stochastic trending okay so we want to see it sloping up if we wish to go long we want to see it sloping down if we wish to go short now if the long-term stochastic and you'll see an example when we get to the charts shortly when we see the long-term stochastic is stuck in between in between the 80 20 zone basically going sideways that's a no trade zone you've got to be very cautious in that area uh, and there of course we real as I've already mentioned we really need to see the 34 EMA uh, trending okay so uh, let me just refer to a couple of the cheat sheets I've got here so what I've just covered there I've got there is a printable cheat sheet I've also got the money on the floor of T10. Now the T10, it's an interesting name. I I've gave it the name T10 years ago just to keep it simple. Uh, but the industry name for a T10 uh, is the money on the floor or the Kaching trade. Don't ask me how or why they were called that, but they've been called that for many many years. Now the T2 and the T10 work very closely together you're using the exact same indicators for those okay so the exact same indicators except for t10 is a change in market direction or a deep pullback correctional uh, indication where the slingshot the t2 is a trend following strategy okay so we use exactly uh, the same short-term stochastic uh, and long-term stochastic to boot so let's now go to the uh, uh, PowerPoint actually to the live charts I should say and uh, so what we're going to look at it here I'll explain the setups here in detail for you uh, on the YM now I'm using a four tick uh, Renko now please remember it doesn't matter whether you trade time based charts um, a tick uh, can be really any type of chart you uh, apply the exact same rules okay the exact same rules so let's start from the left here now first of all remember what I was talking to you about in no man's land now here we still have a good uptrend but I just want you to notice here that the long-term stochastic is sort of above the 50 uh, so it just shows we've been getting some retracements it's always nice when we're overbought or oversold however all of these trades fully qualify still and I'll point them out in detail for you now uh, you may wonder then well why do I need the 34b why do I need save a t25 why not just have one single setup well it's a little bit like a plumber that comes down to do some work in your home he just doesn't come around with a hammer okay or a spanner he'll bring around a range of tools different tools for different jobs likewise we have different uh, indicators and different setups for different trading conditions so let's start with this one here 
this is a 34b I want you to notice here that we've got a beautiful uptrend here well we're even back here that's more of a 21b that's a 21b a 34b 34b but what I want you to notice here is we're sort of pulling back a little deeper here and notice how the long-term stochastic is pulling back but that's okay as long as the 34 EMA is still trending okay so we're looking for the trend now with the short-term stochastic hook you can see the black horizontal line I've placed here so what I'm looking for is the short-term stochastic hook it's great when it's so fully oversold or overbought I love that however it can also poke its head uh, just below or just above for an example just here you've also got a short-term stochastic hook and it just qualifies okay now what you'll find is if you get a major EMA bounce such as a 21 or a 34 EMA bounce you'll find that and let me just drop a line in here for you at those points let me just do this on all of these this one here that would have been a loss but we'll discuss that in a moment uh, that one here was actually qualified that one there and you had one just there now I'll have you notice that we hooked on the uh, the first candle and with Renko when we enter on the first candle realistically you're not into the second by the way um, unless you've got an order where you're waiting for it to tick back but generally we're going to have a buy stop one tick above that that uh, Renko if you like now notice how it's hooked what is very important you actually and look at it or consider it as a fish hook so you can see you've got a really nice hook there you've got a really nice hook there you've got a really nice hook there now when you tend to move out of the EMAs uh, the further out you go quite often the hook will be on the second candle okay which means you're not going to be in until the third candle so most of the time you'll be in on well it qualifies on the first now with the slingshots here I want to see my stop one tick below okay so one tick below one tick below the only exception for that is is say if I'm trading the micro, the micro NQ or the NQ itself where I like to have the stop two ticks below now if we just go back here for a moment now we can see the arrows here uh, what we had there was a t20 and that by the way was a 3b now with 3b's and 2b's you'll generally get much larger moves likewise when you identify a t20 setup we actually call that a t20-1 the first trade after a t20 and if you're going to go for runner now is the time to do it because your t20s will clearly will generally identify the start of a new trend uh, or a trend continuation as we've actually got here and the level we are bouncing off just here this is the prior days close so that white line is the prior days close so let's just continue up here and so here is another hook just here notice how we hook down below we're basically fully overbought but I want you to also notice now that we're moving well out of the EMAs okay so look at that there so the further we are in a trend the further out of the EMAs we are the more likely we are is to have a failure or a deeper pullback now in a strong trending day you can take every one of these but when you're in a range bound day you've got to be very careful when you're out of the EMAs now uh, that would have been a winner 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 uh, now with this one you still would have been in that one okay same now that would have been a loss just there and that was a winner that would have been a loss that was a winner uh, here you still would have been in that one in all practical purpose if you took that one 
well out so once you're sort of uh, getting above that's a th what we call a 13 B up there so once you get a 13 B or higher that is um, or you just got a rule of one little shallow pullback they they're more likely to start to roll over now just there this one just here uh, this is a 34 B and notice how the long-term stochastic is pulling back so overall the long-term stochastic is pulled back from being overbought but you've got a great trending uh, 34 EMA now when we start to see these sorts of retracements as we can see just here this is when then we know the next setup will be a 2b and you had one just there so when you have the deeper pullbacks uh, notice how the long-term stochastic is right down the opposite side okay so it's well back here and don't forget also why I think of it and I can't remember what happens after this but um, with any of our trades we always look at where is our last swing high because time and time again you'll find that you'll go up there and test your swing highs now here let's see well finally we made that and actually look at that there see how we've hit that swing high right to the tick so with your 2Bs, the deeper pullbacks, you can also consider, and that was a 2B there, we'll talk about that, um, because uh, you, you'll get a larger move overall. Note the 200 trending up, the 89 started to level out, but let's have a look at what the anchor chart was also telling us at this stage. So how I have my chart set up, I have the, the lower chart fully set up for the EC, the entry chart, and with multiple screens this makes it easy but upstairs up the screen above I've got uh, uh, two-thirds of a chart set up with my anchor chart one and one-third with the anchor chart two for the sake of this video I'll just stick with the uh, just the entry chart and the anchor chart one but you can see here I'm bouncing uh, here slight overshoot that doesn't matter uh, nice 34b on the anchor chart one uh, you can see there it's a clear-cut 2b now this here was also a slingshot okay now uh, when I have a deeper pullback I like to wait for the super scalper to confirm the trade which means it's not going to be confirmed until the third candle and what I will also do if I'm really concerned about the pullback a very deep one I'll always make sure for the anchor chart one candle to close back in the direction of the trend now that means you're going to be in the trade later but it's a really good confirmation so one two three four five six seven so we had seven reversal candles here and it's great to have a candle close back in a direction confirming this move now I also got to point out here that with this Renko this is a four tick Renko so each one of these steps here is worth ten dollars okay so you got ten dollar uh, moves well each each step is, is ten dollars now typically you're going to find if you enter uh, above the third candle because you're waiting for the anchor chart one candle to close so if it's on a straight four tick you're going to find that your stop loss is going to be between 12 and 14 ticks so 12 ticks with this particular market is sixty dollars up to say seventy dollars as a maximum stop loss now great thing about the YM if you're trading during the Globex session after hours you're generally trading the two tick but this is the New York hours so let's just move this along uh, just here now here is another good example here you are uh, and even there so if you miss that one here is a slingshot you're below not fully oversold but look at overboard I should uh, yeah not fully oversold sorry on the short term but look at the 34 trendy now look at this one just here we pull back and I got stopped out but I want you to look over what was happening on the anchor chart one at that time I actually had a big red candle forming on the anchor chart one okay so it's uh, you'll find that when you enter a trade at times and let me just check that uh, 
yes it would have okay so what we had there was this full red candle okay and if we jumped in on this trade before the candle closed back in the direction of the trend the long side you would have been stopped if you placed your stop two ticks below however if you waited uh, for the uh, super scalper to plot you'd be in on the fourth candle basically somewhere up here and it was a winning trade so just remember when you have deep pullbacks or when you have color changes on your anchor chart one that can be a great time to wait for the uh, candle to close back in a direction basically confirming the trend is continuing okay so just here we've got now another slingshot now see that little kink just there that would have looked like uh, just there like it was going to hook see that green candle but it didn't actually hook if you had have entered there when it hasn't hooked you would have been stopped out so it's very very important that you wait for the hook itself now uh, and right there now you've got the uh, super scalper there and away we go here is another one there again these are all clean cut slingshots now let's look for what looks like a t10 now with a t10 a t10 uh, is is not as high probability as say a 34b uh, and some of our other setups however when you've got great divergence and say a pivot bounce t10s are a great reversal trade now I want you to notice we've now uh, come up we've hit the r1 midline what's going to happen here are we going to get a divergence trade no we'll see what happens here we've gone straight through that now here is another example see down here how you had the short-term stochastic hooked if you had your stop just one tick below you would have been stopped again but look over at your anchor chart see how you had two red candles now on the green candle forming okay we punch through uh, no not the same not quite the same there you actually have a slingshot and it looks like the second one there we go the second entry uh, works out and that's where you'll hear of um, uh, two-legged pullbacks and second entries where some traders like to wait for that the challenge can be that of course you can have seven or eight of these in a row where you don't actually have a secondary entry a secondary pullback let me just fast forward here now we'll see what happens here am I going to get a t10 set up now with a t10 we really want to see the market rolling over nope we still got slingshots and 34 B's uh, look one thing I haven't spoken about here either is the t25 so t25 is simply a two to five candle retracement then a trend continuation that's all it is okay but what you'll see if you know your chart patterns they're flags in the direction of the trend which can be a really effective uh, methodology in trading all right so uh, here no t10 now this is another 2b long and straight away there was another 2b long okay now here note your long-term stochastic is in was oversold sort of in no man's land and that one just there is another by the way another uh, 2b I'm bouncing on my anchor chart EMAs as well as just here just trying to find a, a t10 uh, a val well here's one here not a perfect one I'm a fair way up but still it's a t10 a t10 is where we've been oversold or overbought we start to trend up and we get that short-term stochastic hook okay see this one just here okay it's basically already uh, oversold it's 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 not trending up when we get up to here it becomes then a t2 like this one just here that is a t2 and also a 34b now we're starting to get a bit heady now we're getting a lot of divergence when I have divergence I'm also looking for t10s now a t10 cannot be any higher 
preferably lower so that one there does not qualify here is a t10 just there okay and as always traders we need to be checking regularly where are our pivots and one thing I did miss in pointing out there that was a 2b and that was a 2b both successful trades uh, now if you find that the charts over time frame between that was 56 so that was sort of 9 or 10 minutes of course you can either wait for the market to slow down uh, or up your time frame okay now remember one of our key principles are is follow the gold what's my 34 EMA doing okay what's the 34 EMA doing and as you can see here now I'm fully oversold my 34 is trending and so here I've got once again slingshots again on the way down so you can see those there so we're trending down the 34 is down the long-term stochastic is fully oversold so we've got some setups there now that there would have been a 2 or a 3b but getting into a danger zone and why is this a danger zone as a quick reminder for everyone whenever you've got a flat 200 be very cautious in trading around flat 200 yes you punch through but they can be perilous um, quite challenging perhaps at times I should say now just here by the way this one here that was also a 1d if not a 2d just trying to find another example here look we've got so many two uh, two B's here now here we've got a 2b here after major divergence so this is what we call a 2bd right into the prior days high so always remember to with slingshots with 34 B's t25s be very cautious if you're buying right into it it's like running into a brick wall so traders are hopefully this uh, uh, and by the way down there of course was a slingshot and that was a slingshot just here so hopefully this uh, uh, and just here we're trending down now this is a dicey one okay and most of you are aware that we call this a t4 that is when you have a failed 2b or a 2bd I should say it's after major divergence we call this a t4 how to turn a losing trade into a winning trade right but once again uh, and, the, and where it was challenging the 34 EMA was starting to trend sideways what we really want to see is it start to trend down which it's now doing and look at the long-term stochastic so if you're iffy about that look at your long-term stochastic also wait for the super scalper okay the super scalper will identify and that acts as a confirmation tool now just here we've got another slingshot now we are right on the 200 okay we did punch through somewhat but just be aware uh, I, I have a saying that actually I borrowed from one of our members Raymond um, I'd rather miss a winning trade than have a losing trade be very careful selling at major areas of support and resistance so traders that is a summary of the uh, particularly the t2 hope you enjoyed it see you in the next video